Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Roshana's Mindset Lab. And today, it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Kath Embling here. Thank you so much for coming, Kath. So, can I um, can I start by asking you tell us about yourself? Absolutely. So, first of all, hello, and it's great to be here, Roshana. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Um, so, my name is Kath, and I'm the uh, founder and creative director of Bright Sprout. Uh, so Bright Sprout is a creative and digital marketing agency. So we offer all sorts of services um, from SEO, social media and all sorts of digital things to uh, creative services like photography, video production, and that kind of thing. Um, and then, yeah, personally, um, I've got towards 10 years experience working with small business owners um, all over the country, helping them develop their marketing campaigns across multimedia platforms and developing their brand. Really exciting. Thank you. I really like the name also. How did you arrive at the, the name of the Bright Sprout? Oh, thank you. So, um, yeah, Bright Sprout, it's really, it was two things, actually, because I'm, uh, yeah, my, my first trade really is being a creative. So I wanted the word bright because of, you know, thinking about bright ideas. And then Sprout is to do with, um, so business growth. So, yeah, doing well, growing, that kind of thing. So Bright Sprout just seemed to make sense. And um, we actually have a little Brussels sprout as, as our mascot, so <laughs> it fits in well. Excellent. Okay, so um, are you okay to share the, your business journey? So how it all started? How did you arrive at the idea of going on to uh, an entrepreneurial journey? Absolutely. So um, to be honest, when I, when I think about my business journey beginning, I, I really think perhaps uh, the way I was brought up probably had something to do with that. I think my, my sort of start in life really shaped that. Um, so I'm originally from South Wales and um, I grew up in a, in a town where, well, to be honest, my father has his own business. So that was a, a big thing. I suppose we've got that entrepreneurial spirit in our family, um, but also a lot of our family friends around us, they, they worked for themselves, had their own small businesses. Mm. So I think growing up around people like that, it definitely, although it, you know, it highlighted some of the, the more challenging things about running a business, um, I definitely saw the positive side, you know, the, the freedom that people had and, and just, the, yeah, enjoying working for themselves. So I definitely think that start in life helped shape um, the person I am now. Um, but yeah, so fast forward, you know, two decades, um, my, uh, I had a graduate job working for a media agency in Bristol. And I, oh, I really loved my job. So it was my first job in, you know, as a creative. So I, I got to work with clients all over the West Country on their creative campaigns and their marketing, coming up with ideas for them. And I absolutely loved it. Um, so I was there just over four years. And um, I, so towards the, the final year of me being there, really, I had, I was also doing a master's degree in marketing. So I was working this job, I was working quite a lot of hours doing my master's and I had a few personal things going on as well. So I think that combination of working quite hard at a few things and, and then sort of personal things, it just, I, it led me to burnout really, if I'm, if I'm honest. And I, um, my mental health did suffer at that time. So I had a couple of weeks off and then I went back to work and it, you know, it was fine. But I think through that experience, it caused me, because to be honest, at that point, I hadn't really uh, struggled with mental health at that time. And so it really seemingly came out of nowhere. And it caused me to really think about the direction I was going in in my life. So I think at that time, when I went back to work, I realized that um, perhaps taking some time out to really rethink about what I want to do would be a good thing. Um, so I decided I was going to take some time to travel and um, uh, but unfortunately you know traveling costs money so I had to I actually just had to stay where I was for a while to save up and I, I carried on working for about nine months and then was very fortunate to take um, a few months out to you know spend some time traveling really reassessing what I wanted to do just having that time and space to think about um, perhaps things that hadn't worked for me before causing me to have um, this burnout and yeah, I, I came back to the UK and I, I was very much ready to, you know, restart really and, and just almost reset and see um, what opportunities were right for me. So I, I felt because I'd come back and at that point I, I didn't have a job and obviously I needed to find one quite quickly. But I thought, why don't I try freelancing? Because 
I don't know if I'll have this opportunity again where um, I, f I just felt like it was a fresh start. So um, I, you know, luckily I, I found these two lovely clients straight away. So I, I had some freelancing work quite quickly. And then I got a job working with a charity part time to kind of give me that base salary uh, as I built up my client base. Um, so I did that for about two years and, and absolutely loved it. And um, and then fast forward um, to now and I met my amazing business partner and uh, Bright Sprout is now is now a thing <laughs> which we're delighted about. And uh, yeah, that takes us up to, to now. Wow, this is so interesting. There's so many questions I have I want to ask you. So just going back to your childhood, you said you are surrounded by people with, you know, doing some businesses or having entrepreneurial um, vibe in their life. So when you were little, did you always know that you would be, um, you know, a business owner? Um, I, I think looking back now, it it seems quite obvious that this was always right for me. And actually a lot of my friends from my childhood, my school friends now, you know, when um, when I established Bright Sprout, or even when I started freelancing, actually, they they all said, oh, we always knew you would you would do your own thing. That's just the way you are. And um, and I, I always find it interesting, actually, when you see yourself through other people's eyes and, and you don't always see yourself in that way. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, looking back, I definitely, part, I, I suppose part of what I do as a creative, I always have lots of ideas. So I definitely had a lot of my own ideas about businesses I could have. And I did actually have a business when I was at uni. I, I set up a jewellery business, which I ran. Um, you know, I sold my jewellery in a few shops up in, you know, where I was based. And um, so, yeah, I think I'm just really drawn to just, there's something really freeing about running a business. And I just love the idea of, you know, you wake up every day and you kind of can decide what you're going to do. I Obviously, there's there's days where things are challenging because it, it's all on you. But, um, yeah, I, I think I, I just love that, you know, running with an idea and, and having that freedom, creativity. Yeah. So looking back, I probably did know this is what I was going to do. <laughs> oh, interesting. And you did mention that uh, you have observed the challenging sides of being a business owner. And... Um, yeah, so about this, it's it's very interesting. Um, I've read somewhere that uh, entrepreneurs are people who are gladly working 60 hours a week for themselves uh, so that they don't have to work 40 hours for someone else. So that mm -hmm. idea of freedom is is definitely there. So, but what about the, the other, the challenging aspects? Did they not put you off? Yeah, definitely. I think um, if I'm really honest, I going into even, even my, my jewelry business years ago, I, I, didn't really think so much about the challenges at the time because in, in so many ways doing both of them, I suppose actually the one years ago that there was so much less risk there, um, but doing what I'm doing today, it was, it just, it, I knew at that time when I started freelancing, even before Bright Sprout was, was in existence, I knew I needed this change in my life. And so the, the risk was, it, I was taking that decision to give freelancing a go and if it didn't work, you know, I'd give it a few months and if it didn't work, I could, I would look for a job elsewhere. But I just knew I needed that change. I knew I needed to explore what working for myself would be. But definitely, I think, um, you know, there are challenges and, and certainly what I find, and you'll probably know this yourself as a business owner, every day is a, is a huge, there's something new to learn. It's, it's a school day. And so I think, um, yeah, it, it's, there's, yeah, there's just always challenges to be aware of as well. Obviously, the buck will always stop with you. Um, if you have a big project to finish, you need to put those hours in. But I think it's just about that balance. And um, yeah, the, the pros definitely outweigh the cons for me. Lovely. I really like how comfortable you are talking about, you know, busy, being a business owner. So you started your jewelry business. I find from my work, a lot of people would shy away from that. They would say, oh, I just started this thing or, oh, I just have this side hassle or, you know, something like this. So, and you, you, you're very confident in calling it a jewelry business. Was it something that you grew into or did it just feel natural? I think um, it's, it's really interesting you say that actually, because one of the reasons why I suppose the jewelry business isn't, like I don't run it at the moment, even though I, I, I could pick it back up, is because I, when I started doing it, I, so I was a student and I, I actually, um, the university I was at did, they had like an entrepreneurial entrepreneurial hub really to support new business owners on campus. So I went along and said, this is what I'm doing. And they gave me all this amazing support. 
Um, and so for a time it, it was, you know, it was going really well. I was selling jewelry in the retail shops and I had a website at the time, which back 10 plus years ago was a big thing. <laughs> I remember being like, wow, I've got a website. Wow. It was this new thing. Um, but I think I, at the time, actually, where I, I sort of came and stuck with that business was that I was a bit overwhelmed by understanding what it meant to go limited, copywriting my logo. I was, um, I got a little bit too tied up with all of that. Mm. And it actually, it, it overcomplicated something that didn't need to be complicated. Um, and because of that, I, I, I think I did lose that confidence, actually. So, and I, you know, I was really young at the time. So I think there was just that, um, yeah, it's, it's quite hard when it's your, your first venture. Um, but definitely now, fast forward to, to where we are, I, I suppose I have that experience to draw on. Um, so it just means that, yeah, I, I know kind of how to get through those things and what things we need to be aware of. So it's a bit easier. Kath, it's so inspiring. A lot of permission. There is a lot of courage to just go out just to go out there and say, yeah, I've got this idea. So I'd like to some help with this. So this is fantastic. And so that brings me to the university part, um, if, if I may, because I know that, you know, to be an entrepreneur, you don't really need a university education, um, not to mention a master's degree in marketing, which is absolutely fantastic. And I know I've been coming from academia, so I'm lecturing in marketing, as you know, uh, part-time. Um, I realized that a master's in marketing will give you a totally different level of thinking, more of a strategic yeah, way of thinking, really. But just going back to this idea, what made you go into university if you were thinking that potentially you would start your own business? Yeah, so I think, um, to be honest, at the time, I, uh, I, re I so my first degree was in English. I really love, uh, really loved English. And it was just, I, I think actually it's, it was a sign of the times because um, around the time I was going to uni, there was less, um, I feel like there was less awareness about um, apprentice, apprenticeships or different styles of learning. I think back then it was very much, if you're able, you'll go to uni. And there was a big drive towards getting people to stay on, uh, you know, either go to college to do A-levels or go to sixth form, go to uni. So higher education, definitely, I felt like it had more of a, um, that there's this prestige around it whereas I think now it's a really amazing thing that we celebrate different types of learning um so I think at the time it was just that you know I really loved English and and really it was you know I had I had the grades so I was sort of funneled to go to uni I, I didn't I wasn't really given any other options I did actually that I did have this pipe dream for a while that um perhaps I would train to be uh, like a plumber or a tradie and have this pink fan and, and be a yeah, handy woman. Wow. I just thought that there would be such a market for that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I guess I've always had these ideas, but I think because of this, um, yeah, that drive towards higher education, that was just what I did. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely made the most of it when I went to uni, I, I got very involved in the students union. And I think I I, I really made this, you know, made the most of the opportunities available. So going along to the business hub to get that experience. Um, yeah, definitely joining loads of clubs and societies to, to build that network and, and do the things I was interested in. Mm, I really like it how, uh, for what you say, it's fantastic that you have the ideas side, the creativity, the creative, as I said, side, and then more of a business side and marketing side. And it's fantastic how they two come together, uh, isn't it? So I guess my next question, um, my question, my, my next question is around um, marketing. So you said that you, when you decided to go freelancing, uh, you were lucky enough that, you know, you had two clients pretty much right away. Can you share this story that how did they, you know, come to you? So I actually, I, I feel really fortunate about this. I So those two sort of founding clients of mine, I knew them from the days when I was working at the, the media agency. So um, it was, yeah, it was, it was almost just picking up where we left off. And, you know, I'd been working with them for four plus years at that point. So the relationship was there. And I, I do, I, you know, I'm, I'm never... I'm, I'm always aware how valuable and how important my network has been to helping me start off because without that, it would have been a very, very different story. It would have been much more, potentially much more difficult to um, work out how to put myself out there in the beginning, how to find the right clients. So I think starting off that way, having those two clients, it really meant that I could then build on 
yeah, build on the two and, and get to where we are today. Nice. Um, okay. And, um, and when it comes to then starting uh, working later, starting on a business, your company, uh, Bright Proud, um, and taking all this network with you and um, marketing efforts. So one thing I find a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with is talking about pricing, especially if these are potential or prospective clients, they've known them for some time, as you mentioned in your, uh, in your case. And, and having those discussions about, you know, the word, the terms of service, uh, pricing negotiations, setting boundaries, they are really quite, you know, challenging tasks for a lot of entrepreneurs. So how was your experience? You know, so these, these two new clients came in, you knew them for some time, how did it well work for you? Yeah, it's a really, really challenging thing. And I, I think so many, do you know what I find quite refreshing actually, as someone who's also struggled with pricing, every other business owner, when I've got to know other business owners and we, you know, we're in a network and we support each other, I don't know one person who hasn't struggled with pricing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it that that makes me feel so much better because when you're starting out, you kind of think, oh, well, I should, I should know, or you know, I and I feel like there's two different elements. There's first of all setting your price and and knowing what your price should be and then on top of that there's the um not undervaluing yourself as well so you can you can set your price but then maybe you'll think a project will take less hours because you you don't want to perhaps there's a lot of background work and you feel like you shouldn't be charging for that so it, it can get really difficult but um I think for me initially I you know I I had a thankfully I had some friends who also had their own businesses and I I went to them and I, I remember actually asking a friend, a former colleague who was also a freelancer, um, oh, so what's your rate? Because he was doing a similar thing to me. So, you know, what's your rate? What do you charge? And I thought there was going to just be this straightforward answer. And I thought, great. And then I'll, I'll run with that. But actually, he was like, uh, oh, it's how long is a piece of string? And it's really complicated. And, and I just remember thinking, wow, this is the, this is the most difficult thing to do. But in the end, the way I started off was I, I just worked out my hourly rate. I think that was the starting point, working out based on my experience and what I felt was right for a freelancer at the time. I worked out my hourly rate and my day rate. And then from there, I, I, I literally just had to, to be honest, almost guess, you know, initially how long things were going to take because I hadn't, I was new to this. Um, and then naturally, like a lot of business owners or freelancers, I, I definitely undervalued myself. I definitely didn't factor in maybe reporting time you know a lot of what I do is social media and and digital marketing so things like the the planning maybe the the content strategy planning behind the scenes I I I didn't factor that in I didn't factor in reporting time so um I I kind of really started by fact just pricing up the things that the client would see Mm -hmm. um so I think that was a big learn is just always being aware of the things that go on in the background and and obviously if if that ever comes up you know justifying that to a client and making it really transparent that there's there's all this planning behind the scenes because I, I do think particularly when it's you know when it's digital marketing there's there's only the elements that people see and um yeah there's a lot of uh, planning and thought that goes into the the sort of the stuff in the background as well so yeah that's what I'd say for that one really valuable Kev are there any other um challenges or lessons that you'd like to share perhaps yeah I think um I think another one for me would be so I I remember years ago and I do you know I don't know I can't remember where I saw it actually but um so we often think about you know b2b business to business and I think for me um something that I've really learned as a, a business owner working with other business owners is um it's really important to be human and um, so I, this article I was reading was actually about rather than B2B, we're in a time where H to H is really important. And I really believe that. I think more than ever, being human is, is really key, being authentic. And um, I, sorry, I'm just really conscious there's a loud noise. Shall I just, oh, it's gone. <laughs> Apologies about that. The perks of working from home. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I think being human is really key. And I, I think when when I moved from being a freelancer to um, being a business owner, I, I think, you know, becoming an, you know, part of an agency with my business partner, I, and, you know, having the title as director, it was almost as if, oh, that's a really serious title. You know, that's a really, and we're an agency now, you know, we've got to be a certain way. 
but actually the people behind it, that the culture you create as people, as humans, doesn't change. And so the way I see it with, with our own business is obviously our brand and our, you know, has its own culture and, and values, which are separate to myself and my business partner. But we as people are the same and, and being human is so key. So I think it's just remembering that while we, you know, we want to, um, yeah, while we're in these roles, it's just really important to always be human and remember, and I think having fun with it as well. I think when you're dealing with other business owners or clients, I think we can, we, we think of work as maybe a, a difficult thing or something we're not necessarily meant to enjoy, but I think it is so important to enjoy it, wake up and enjoy it as much as you can. And um, yeah, I think having fun with that, it's, it's really key for building great client relationships and just really enjoying what you do every day. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really inspiring. Um, well, you talked about, you shared some really valuable tips. Um, for someone just starting at the start of their journey or perhaps thinking about starting uh, their own business, are there any tips that you would, you know, you would share? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, so what I'd say to begin with is to, to really take some time to think about what your focus would be. So um, whether it's, you know, a product or a service, I think taking that time in the beginning to have a look at what maybe competitors are doing or similar businesses and taking that time to plan um, your, your vision and what your focus is, I think is really key. Um, and I, I think in doing that at the start, then it saves a lot of time and potential confusion later on. Um, so I think when so a lot of what we talk about in social media marketing is having content pillars so uh, usually a, a business or a brand will have between three and six content pillars that are um essentially it's really what um what describes a brand or you know what's linked to the brand so it could be things like sustainability or uh, trust or you know all, all these different things their values so i think yeah taking time to find your focus is key and then from there, thinking about whether it's your personal brand or your business's brand, thinking about what your content pillars would be and then really, really sticking to those and, and thinking because it, it is so important to be authentic. And I think that's a huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, so once you've established your, your niche or your focus for, for your strategy, have your content pillars then for your almost your branding and your marketing. And, and then it really helps you be authentic as well. Um, and I think consistency is really key. So, um, of course, I'm thinking more, you know, particularly about marketing now, but I think whether you're, whether it's the frequency at which you post on social media or your brand, um, how you come across as an individual, it's really important to be consistent uh, for your brand. Um, and I think something, yeah, something that it, just thinking back to when Jenny and I set up Bright Sprout, defining maybe in the beginning defining what success means to you mm. and I think there's so much awareness at the moment about um the work-life balance I think that there was already that conversation you know starting but I think with the pandemic it's really brought a lot of this conversation to the fore about um you know do we want to be working long long hours you know what you know is that is that how you want to work are we working smart is it working for us and our, our personal life and I think defining what success means to you so maybe it is, you know, earning lots of money and putting the hours in and that's amazing. Or maybe it's maybe it's having that balance and, and it's just really making sure what you're doing is true to yourself. So going back to authenticity and, and setting those goals that are right for you. Um, we, we all work in different ways and we all want different things. And it's just being aware that we're, we're really unique and individual. So um, so, yeah, I'd say they're my core things. And, and just a sort of cheesy one is, is just celebrate the, the little things. You know, when you set up a business, there's so much excitement. There's also a lot of um, it can be, you know, it's a really busy time. And, and I think it can be, especially when you're a new business surrounded by other businesses that are established, can feel a bit overwhelming and a bit daunting. And there can be days where you question, you, you know, you doubt yourself. But I think it's really important to, to try and... Um, celebrate those little things because they they happen all the time and I, I think by doing that it creates that positive mentality that will help push you through the, the more challenging times i really like it where when um the, everything you talked about and there seems to be a perfect balance of practical things 
with some strategic elements and the mindset things, as you said, celebrating your wins and successes. And you wouldn't know what success is like unless you define it, of course. Um, so it's also very important. Thank you so much, Kav. It was absolute pleasure talking to you today. And uh, thank you for sharing your lessons and, and tips for, um, um, begin for those who are just starting out. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming in. Thank you so much. It was really lovely to chat to you, Shana.